I work at a fast food joint on the outskirts of Columbus, Ohio. I work the night shift, so I'm routinely trapped in that place until 2 in the morning. It's not that bad though, I get paid extra for working late, and I don't have class until the early afternoon. The downside is that it's spooky as hell. The restaurant is located the corner of a block in a lower income area. It's a very strange place for a fast food joint, as there really isn't a lot of businesses around besides the gas station across the street, and the block the place is on seems mostly residential. The majority of the houses are one story, and in various states of disrepair. There are three ways in and out of the store. There are two doors in the lobby. One gets locked at 8 p.m., for safety reasons, and the other gets locked at 10 p.m., when the lobby closes. It's common practice for employees to unlock these doors after 10 p.m. to go smoke. They stand just outside the door while smoking, then lock the door as they come back in. Sometimes they forget to lock the door behind them, and sometimes they let people in on accident. Now, whenever people come in after close, you can always tell by the door chime ringing throughout the place. And whenever that happened, two employees would go out to the lobby and tell whoever was standing there that we were sorry, but the lobby was closed, and they'd have to leave. They've always left. It's never been a problem before. The other night, I was working with John, a tall black guy, and Katie, a short, cute red-headed girl. The shift was going as usual, albeit a little slow due to the falling snow. At about 1 am, however, we hear the door chime ring, the sign a lobby door has been opened. John and I go to the lobby prepared to tell whoever was in there we were sorry, but the lobby was closed, and they'd have to leave. You see, the third way out of the building is a door in the very back of the store that they use to load food and stuff off the supply truck every week. It only opens from the inside, and an alarm sounds whenever you open it, and it keeps sounding until the code is entered. We rush to the back to check it out. The door is already closed, it shuts mechanically, but the alarm was still blaring. I enter the code to stop the alarm, and we look around. Nothing is out of the ordinary, but then we realize that John is not in the back with us. The door chimes. Katie and I run back out to the lobby to see John sprinting outside into the darkness and the snow. We don't follow. We are too terrified to go out into the night with whatever made John go crazy. We lock the door back up. Figuring John will call us to let us know to let him back in. He can't be long, the snow is overwhelming, and he didn't even take his coat. He never called. He never came back. No one has seen him since. His coat is still hanging up in the break room. I just with I knew what he saw that made him run like that. I want to know if he's okay. But I never want to know how close it was to being me that ran out into the dark. The Doe Network. Forensic renderings and facial approximations of the victim, victim's shirt. Unidentified female. Date of discovery, April 13, 1992. Location of discovery, Sheridan County. Wyoming. Estimated date of death, February 1992. State of remains, not recognizable, decomposing slash putrefaction. Cause of death, homicide by blunt force trauma to the head. Same killer. The victim's remains were located in a ditch near mile post 5 on the west side of Interstate 90, approximately 5 miles south of the Wyoming slash Montana border. It is believed the victim was murdered at another location and dumped at the discovery site. DNA evidence obtained from the victim matches DNA evidence from 213 UFWY. Polaroid found among a collection of serial killer Dean Corll's belongings. The boy in the photograph has never been identified. Be me a 9 years old kid. Live in a remote mountainous village in a war-torn country during the 90s. People are struggling. Food is scarce and the war has finally reached the outskirts of the village causing multiple deaths. Everyone is scared shitless, and men of the village have few bullets and guns left and no electricity. One night in late winter, a boy was walking towards his home normally from his grandparents' house like he always did. Suddenly the whole town hears a loud scream and many including me rushed to see what's happening. We found the kid has pissed himself and his face is covered with dirt with his eyes wide open and in shock state. After they pour water on his face and relentlessly screaming at him to say what happened, he starts talking while crying loudly and gasping. 
heads, man big, bags, with chains, he looked at me and I ran away screaming. Men ridiculed him and said he probably saw someone with bags going towards his home and he imagined things in the dark. Days later, another kid got ran towards his home screaming the same thing. The next night, another kid went missing. Men decided to start a night patrol. All kids were told not to leave their homes after the sun goes down. They searched everywhere in the mountain until the dawn. Next morning the army has arrived to town and all men had to hide in the mountain not to be imprisoned. Four nights the village was terrorized not by invading army but a strange creature that kept on knocking on doors at night and peeking through windows in the dark. The situation got so bad, even the army got wind of it and started searching for this thing slash man. Two days later the army retreated back to the outskirts of the village and the men went down from the mountain. Along with them the missing boy. He had shallow cuts all over his body. He told them that a monster dressed in black plastic bags and chains and bones took him and beaten him and left him in the mountain. The area of the mountain was known to the village. For years the village people used a cave in the top of the mountain for a dreadful reason. The cave was used to bury children and miscarried births. Men decided to set up an ambush for this thing. All got armed with little they had, and some even got axes and large knives. They waited through the entire night until it seemed they lost all hope they'd find him. It was about dawn when what appears to be a man dressed with nothing but black garbage bags and chains around his body with a large bag with bones sticking out of it came from afar. They waited from a distance to see and know more, what he does next. The man enters the cave and then comes out with a bucket full of dirt and empties it outside revealing what to be the remains of a child dead body. He then proceeds to skin the limbs and take the bones inside his bag. Shock faces. JPG in all men. Attack mode engaged. Man is caught and after heavy beatings they discovered he has been doing this for a while, digging children bodies. Wacko thought he's some sort of wizard and wanted children bones to summon devils to service him. The child was kidnapped for his blood. Needless to say this was a war zone and men didn't want someone scaring the crap out of their families more than they already are, so they killed the guy, buried him in the mountain and called it a day. The end. This one happened to my father. Not exactly paranormal, 100% scary. Be dad 1980s. Get in a car accident. Multiple broken bones, messed up spine, he's got scoliosis now, skull fracture, ruptured lung. Another organ was screwed I can't remember what. Has to go under the knife. Doctors trying to save him, looks like he isn't gonna make it. Apparently he was paralyzed but he could still hear them, but not see. Doctors start talking about organ transplant for the boss. Doctors begin to cut him open while he is conscious but paralyzed. One doctor begins to argue that this man could easily be saved slash what they are doing is wrong. Argument ensues. Second time this month. Boss needs another. You freaking do it then. Gets sewn back up. Lives. He says he was slipping in and out of consciousness through the whole thing. Vehemently states they were trying to take his organs on behalf of the boss while he was conscious. Needless to say he is paranoid about surgery. At least seven women were killed in the Connecticut River Valley area during the 1980s. The killer, who was never apprehended, has become known as the Connecticut River Valley Killer. In 2004, Maura Murray withdrew about $300 from an ATM, then later crashed her car. She told a passerby that she did not need help, and that she had already called AAA, she did not. When the police arrived at the scene, she was gone, and was never seen again. A man identifying himself as Dan Cooper boarded a plane bound for Seattle in 1971, demanded $200,000 in cash, then parachuted out into a thunderstorm. He was never identified, and only a small amount of the money he stole was ever found. Rebecca Corain was last seen on a Disney cruise ship where she worked. Security camera footage shows her having a seemingly stressful phone conversation with an unknown person. She then walks off camera, and is never seen again.
There's a desert between the states of Durango, Coahuila, and Chihuahua, all of them in northern Mexico, known as La Zona del Silencio, the Zone of Silence. A lot of stuff has happened there since the 1930s. One of them is that in July 1970, an Athena test missile launched from a military base near Green River, Utah, in the direction of the WSMR Polygon, lost control, and fell in this area. The rocket was carrying two small containers of Cobalt-57, a radioactive element. Immediately, a team of specialists arrived to search for the missile. The search, by land and air, lasted three weeks. When the rocket was finally located, a road was built to transport the remains and a small amount of contaminated soil. As a result of the rescue operations of the U.S. Air Force, several myths and stories about the area emerged, including strange magnetic anomalies that impede radio transmission, mutations of flora and fauna or extraterrestrial visits. There has been various truckers who drive through the desert by night that have reported weird humanoid figures walking by the road. Also, the carcasses of a lot of animals that belong to ranches near the area are still being found to this day. A couple of crazy guys from Brazil were found dead in 1966, but the cause of death has never been determined. No one knows exactly what they were doing when they died, but some believe they were attempting to communicate with aliens. This is known as the lead masks case. In December 1982, several people claimed to see a distressed woman walking alongside a road in Mississippi, carrying a very young girl. Two days later, a truck driver called police to report seeing the body of an adult woman floating down a nearby river. Searching the river, police found the body of a young girl, dubbed Delta Dawn, who had died one or two days before. Her identity was never discovered, and the adult woman seen floating in the river was never seen again. In July of 2014, Lars Mittenk, a German man on vacation in Bulgaria, began acting strangely, and sending paranoid text messages to his mother. Security camera footage at Varna Airport showed him running outside, where he was seen hopping over a fence and running into a wooded area. He has not been seen since. The Long Man of Wilmington is believed to have been created sometime in the 16th or 17th centuries, although its creators and purpose, if any, are unknown. And yes, in 2010, some people did in fact paint a giant dick on it. Three children disappeared from a beach in Australia in 1966. The parents were not watching them, however this was considered normal, due to Australia being relatively crime-free at the time. They have never been found. Kathy Harcourt was found floating in the East River back in the mid-80s, cause of death was a gunshot wound to the head, it was never determined if it was self-inflicted or not. Theories arose that it was, as her body had been determined to have been floating for nearly a day. No gun was found at the site where she turned up, but the telling gun was found upstream a ways in the water near the bank. However no prints were liftable as it had been in the water too long. It was also said that she was badly in debt to a dealer, but that could not be proven either, so to this day, the case is unsolved. This photo of Kieran Horman was taken on the morning of June 4, 2010. Less than an hour later, he was reported missing, and has never been found. The body of a woman, dubbed the Istil woman, was found in a mountainous region of Norway in the early 1970s. She was last seen with two menacing looking men, who were never found. Her identity remains a mystery. 25 year old Tiffany Daniels disappeared near a beach in Pensacola, Florida in 2013. Despite several sightings, she has never been found. Her family believes she may have been the victim of human trafficking. Eight women were killed in Austin, Texas in the late 1880s by an unknown serial killer known as the Servant Girl Annihilator. The killer's identity, as well as his motives, were never determined. The Oxford Electric Bell was created in 1825, and consists of a primitive battery powering a metal ball. It has been ringing continuously for over 170 years, and no one knows exactly how the batteries work. On December 20, 1976, 
a young mother-to-be was found brutally murdered in Pennsylvania. She had been strangled, after which her body, and the body of her unborn baby, had been cut into pieces, the parts shoved into three suitcases, which were then thrown off a bridge. Her nose, ears, and breasts had been removed and were never recovered. The killer was never found. Guy and his girlfriend go hiking in Washington. Don't return, family report them missing. Later, Guy is found dead, by a gunshot to the head, in a sleeping bag. Months later, girlfriend's skull is found in a street. Her body is discovered nearby, she had a tube sock tied around her neck. A month later, a two-year-old girl turns up at a grocery store, alone. She is taken to police, her grandmother sees her on TV and calls her. Police ask little girl where her parents are. She says mommy is in the trees. Girl's mom's body is found half buried in snow in a forest, the dad's truck is found nearby. Dad is nowhere to be found. 25 years pass. Dad's skull is found within one mile of where the mom's body was found. Still unclear if he was a victim of the murders. In 2009, the body of a man calling himself Peter Bergman was found naked on a beach in Ireland. Despite several months of research, the man's true identity was never found. There was a serial killer in the UK during the 1960s that would murder prostitutes, then dump their naked bodies. The media started calling him Jack the Stripper. Janos Elbert was a Hungarian literature historian and professional translator. His death is still shrouded in mystery, as he allegedly drowned in the knee-deep water of Lake Balaton. He worked as the director of the Institute for Theater History. On the day of his death, his secretary recalled receiving a call from a man with a raspy voice, asking to be put through to Comrade Elbert. Note that this expression has largely fallen out of usage at this point in Hungarian history, he closed his office door and spoke to the man for about half a minute. Shortly thereafter, he left the building in a hurry. His last confirmed words were Nemso Kara Yavik. Translating to I'll be right back. From there, he took a cab to a radio station where he worked part-time and took out a due payment of some 1,000 huff, roughly equating to 300 US dollars in today's money. He again took the cab to Budapest's southern train station, from where he took a train to the city of Siofik. A ticket controller recalled how distressed he seemed upon hearing that passengers would have to take replacement buses because of maintenance work on the train tracks. Elbert got off the train when it stopped at Sakesfe Herver, and again used a taxi instead of one of the buses provided by the rail company. He told the driver that he was meeting a colleague at a resort on the shore of Lake Balaton. No evidence of a meeting being planned was ever recovered, aside from the suspicious phone call from earlier. Elbert asked the receptionist of the resort for a coffee, but the coffee machine was broke. The receptionist told him of a cafe close by. The last time anyone saw him was when he left the resort to get there. Early in the morning of the next day, a man found him floating dead in 50 centimeters deep water near a pier. His wife and son died the same year under suspicious circumstances. In 1957, the body of a young boy was found in a box on the side of the road in Philadelphia. Despite an extensive investigation with numerous leads, the boy's identity was never determined. In 1984, a German man named Gunter Stahl, after showing signs of severe paranoia, screamed Jets Jet mir ein Licht auf. Now I've got it! And wrote the letters Jogtze on a piece of paper, then immediately scratched them out. He was later found naked after a car crash, claiming four men had been with him. He died on the way to the hospital, and the four men, if they even existed, were never found. In 1999, a man named Ricky McCormick was found dead in a remote area of Missouri. In his pockets, police found two papers containing what appeared to be cryptic notes. They have never been deciphered, and the circumstances of McCormick's death remain a mystery. The Phaistos disc is believed to have been created near the Greek island of Crete. Little is known beyond that, as the purpose of the disc, the meanings of the glyphs, 
and the date of creation are all mysteries. Oh fuck this one's creepy. 19 year old girl from New Mexico tells her mom she's going to a friend's house, never makes it there. Girl is never seen again. Several years later, at a Florida gas station, a photo that seems to depict the missing girl, tied up, falls out of a truck. The truck drives away, is never found. The boy in the photo is never identified. Been looking for a case, but I can't think of the guy's name. Teenager in the 1989s. Claims to be harassed and stalked but nobody listens. One day walking home from school, two strangers pull up besides him, jump him, and strangle him until he loses consciousness. Wanders home when he wakes up. People still don't fully believe him. This happens a few more times before he is found murdered. Patricia Meehan crashed her car on the night of April 20, 1989, after driving on the wrong side of the road. Immediately following the crash, she emerged from her car, and stared, motionless, for several minutes at the wreckage, before turning around and running into a field, never to be seen again. She was nearly 400 miles from her home, though neither the police nor her family could offer an explanation for this. Six people were killed between 1918 and 1919 in New Orleans by an assailant known only as the Axeman of New Orleans. In a famous letter supposedly written by the Axeman, he claimed to be demon rather than human, and very fond of jazz music. In the letter, the writer spoke of his plan to kill in the early morning of March 19, 1919, but any house playing jazz music would be spared. No murders were committed that night. I'll keep going then. In 1930s Cleveland, an unidentified serial killer horrifically murdered and dismembered at least 12 victims, most of whom were never identified. CCTV footage at a Los Angeles hotel showed 21-year-old Elisa Lam behaving strangely for several minutes before eventually entering an elevator. Days later, her dead body was found inside a water tank on the roof of the hotel. It is unknown how or why she entered the tank. Chris Kremers and Liz Anfrun were two young Dutch women who disappeared while hiking in Panama. Several months later, their bones were discovered, along with some of their belongings. Some strange photos were taken with their smartphones, and their call logs suggested they were trying to contact help. A cause of death was never determined, although one forensic scientist noted that there were no scratches or marks of any kind on the bones. This shit is so crazy. I'll try to summarize. Family's house catches fire under mysterious circumstances. Parents and some children survive, but not all of them. Several bones found, unknown if they belong to the missing children. Some people claim to have seen the children, accompanied by some threatening looking men, in nearby areas. Photo arrives in mail several years later depicting a man who looks similar to one of the missing children. Private investigator is hired to investigate, but he disappears and is never found. In 1912, eight people were found dead in a home in Laos. They had all been brutally bludgeoned to death with an axe. Despite a long investigation with several suspects, no one was ever charged. The partially decomposed body of a woman was found frozen under a lake in Wisconsin in 2008. Due to the state of the body, she was never identified, and a cause of death was never determined. Amy Lynn Bradley disappeared while on a cruise in 1998. She has not been seen since, however several people have reportedly spoken with her, claiming that she was begging for help. A photo of a scantily clad woman, bearing a striking resemblance to Bradley was emailed to her parents, suggesting that she may have been sold into sex slavery. Four-year-old Michael Dunahy disappeared from a playground in Canada in 1991, just meters away from his parents. His disappearance resulted in one of the largest investigations in Canadian history, but he has never been found. Bella Kiss was a serial killer who would place his victims in large metal drums containing alcohol. After serving in World War I, he escaped from a Serbian hospital, and was never found. 
After having a picnic with several of their friends on a beach in Australia, two young girls wandered off and never returned. The next day, their murdered bodies were found buried in the sand. The killer was never found. The Voynich manuscript is believed to have been written somewhere in northern Italy during the 1400s. It apparently depicts several different subjects, such as biology, botany, and astronomy. It is written in an unknown language, very little of which has been deciphered. Investigators believe Jennifer Kess was abducted outside her Orlando condominium on January 24, 2006. Her car was later found at a nearby apartment complex. Security cameras at the complex took several pictures, three seconds apart, showing an unidentified person parking and walking away from her car. The person's face is obscured in all photos, and their identity, as well as Jennifer's whereabouts, remain a mystery. 17-year-old Brianna Maitland was last seen leaving her job in March, 2004. Her car was discovered crashed into an abandoned building the next day, though there was no sign of her, and she has not been seen since. Between 1986 and 1991, a total of 10 women were murdered in the South Korean city of Weiseong. The infamous series of murders, which have still never been solved despite over 20,000 suspects being considered, was the first known case of a serial killer in the young country's history. Got a few more. The Lady of the Dunes is the name given to the body of an unidentified woman found in Massachusetts in 1974. Several theories exist as to her identity, including that she was an extra on the 1975 horror film Jaws, though none of these theories have been proven. 14-year-old girl hanging out with friends at her apartment. One friend hears voices, thinks the girl's mom is back, sneaks out the back window because he'll get in trouble if he's caught there. Two girls go to sleep. Mom returns home after 1 a.m., notices all the light bulbs have been unscrewed. Mom sees a person sleeping in her daughter's bed. Wakes up later, realizes the person in the bed is actually the other friend. Friend says girl went to sleep on the couch. Girl is never seen again. On November 1, 1980, the body of a young woman was found in Huntsville, Texas. She had been killed just hours before her body was found, and several people reported speaking with her the night before, she was apparently trying to get to a nearby prison. Despite this, her identity, as well as that of her killer, has never been discovered. In 1943, a skeleton belonging to an unidentified female murder victim was found inside a tree in Worcestershire, England. Several months later, graffiti appeared nearby, asking, who put Bella down the WYCH elm? WYCH elm is the type of tree the body was found in. This lead police to believe the victim's name may have been Bella. Despite this, her identity is still unknown, and her remains have since been lost. From the late 1970s until as recently as the early 1990s, as many as 11 women were murdered in a series of killings that is now known as the Redhead Murders. The killer, S, as well as many of the victims, have never been identified. 